Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is a beginner's guide to the ITX design tools. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett Tech. This video is a short chapter based tutorial on the absolute basics of Design Studio and Design Server. I will show you how to create a project, how to create a type tree, how to create a map source and map, how to import, export, and finally how to load the examples. When the Design Studio is first started, close the Welcome page. In the Extender Navigator pane, right click, choose New, Extender Project, then give your project a name. And click Finish. When you open Design Server for the first time and sign in, you will be at the Projects page and there should only be the very first example project that is given with the product, Process Orders. To create a project, we're going to click the Create New Project button. We're going to give the project a name. Click the Create Project button at the bottom here. And that's it, the project is created. We click in the project to go inside. And here we can see we have an empty maps, flows, files, and connections, apart from the four default ones. Within your project, right click on type trees and choose new type tree. Give the type tree a name, confirm the project name and click finish. In the main edit window, right click the root object and choose add. Confirm that you want to add a new type. Give the new item a name. I'm using text item and I'm changing the properties window from category here to item. Confirming by pressing the enter key. Clicking on yes to confirm that I want to do this. This is the basic type tree for creating a blob. No further work is required. From the tree menu, choose analyze, structure and logic. Confirm there are no errors. Click on the tree again. Click on save and then close. To create a type tree, we're going inside our project, project one, click on the schemas option. We click the plus button to create a completely new type tree. Give the type tree a name. It's not necessary to add the .mtt. This is a hangover from the Eclipse based days but I'm going to add it for consistency. Here we click the Add button, give the new type a name, and we change it from a category to an item. That's everything that's absolutely required to get a working type tree. We shall close this window, we shall analyze the type tree, and then we shall save and close. To create a map source, right click on map files and choose new map source. Give the map source a name, confirm the project and click finish. Within the map source to create a new map, click this icon, give the new map a name and a new map is created and shown in the outline view 
and it will be invisible in the composition view until it becomes an executable map. Click on this icon to create a new input card. I'm going to give the input card a name of IN1, choose the generic type tree that I created earlier, and from that choose the text item object. I'm going to read a file called input.txt. Create a new output card with this icon. Choosing the type tree again, picking the file that I'm going to write to, and click OK. The final task is to populate all output cards with rules. I can just create a rule by dragging in to out and this map is now finished. I can also surround the rule with a functional map call and then once the functional map call is in there I can right click the rule and choose a functional map wizard to create the functional map which will correctly create all the input and output cards required using the objects that are supplied as arguments and the properties of the rule where you are entering. I click create, I click close. If we switch to the composition view, you will now see that the executable map is shown because we added the input and the output cards and the functional map is shown underneath it. Save the file and close. To create a map in Design Server, we go inside our project, we click on the Maps icon, we click on the plus button. There's no such thing as a map source file, the maps are just held individually in the project. So we're going straight for our new map, clicking OK. I'm going to add an input card. going to use the command line. I'm going to choose the adapter type as file and the file I'm going to read is input.txt. The schema is going to be the one that I just created. And that's our input card created. To add an output card, click add target. name is out1. Again I'm going to use command line. I'm going to choose the file adapter and name the file output.txt. I'm going to use the same schema. And in the rule, currently empty, again I can just drag and drop create a rule making the map complete and ready to run. If I create a functional map, as I press the enter key I am prompted do you want to create the map each item. In the hierarchy view down at the bottom right here underneath new map 1 you can see the functional map created and in the functional map again I can drag and drop to create the rules within the functional map. Save the functional map and close. The top level map is already saved. That can be closed. To export our project, from the file menu we choose export. The export type is archive file. We click next. We can export everything within the project, but there are some things we might want to not export. So I'm going to deselect the .bac and the .mopt file. And we're keeping the important map source and type tree. Choose a location for the archive file. I'm going to put it onto my desktop. And then click finish. This archive file can be seen on my desktop and within it the project and within it the map source and the type tree. If I right click the project and choose delete, 
delete the project contents on disk. The project is now completely gone. To import a project into a fresh design studio, I can choose File, Import, Existing Projects into Workspace. We click Next. We select our archive file. We browse to it on the desktop, project1.zip, and we click Finish. Our project has been recreated with its complete name and all the artifacts intact, map source and the type tree. To export a project from Design Server, tick the box, click this icon with the up arrow, and it will immediately download into your downloads area that is set as the default for your browser. To import a project, First of all, I'm going to need to delete this project. Project 1 is gone. Here is the project I exported earlier. All I do is click on the Import Project button, drag the zip file to the Import Project link. I can change the project name here if I want to, and click Import Project. and here are the maps that were in that project. To use one of the examples, I'm going to use the JExit example here. You can either create a new extender project and copy the files into the default location for that project and I recommend this, or you can untick this box and point directly to the example as it is already on the disk, although you do run the risk of damaging the example and it is best to work on a copy. So I'm going to tick that box, click finish. In my workspace I now have a folder called JExit which does not have any artifacts in it. In the ITX examples directory under general JExit, here are the files that make up that example. I'm going to copy those in to my project. And then back on the extender navigator screen, I'm going to right click and refresh the project and all the artifacts appear in their relevant places. And then you can open them as necessary. To load one of the examples into Design Server, first we need to put all of the relevant files into a zip archive. Then from the Design Server screen we choose Import Project and we drag and drop the archive we just created into the Design Server. We can leave the project name as is, click the Import button and there we go, the project has been imported and all the maps are available for further editing as necessary. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, hit that like button, perhaps leave a comment. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett Tech. Thank you.